Hi there, this is Dave, and welcome to my overview of the Shadow Hearts series. This classic RPG franchise began and ended on the PlayStation 2, and even though it came out in a time of my life that was pretty tumultuous, it's always been a personal favorite of mine. Maybe it's because I'm a history buff, or because it's so gay friendly, but it really does just speak to me. It takes place in an alternate reality Earth with magic, demons, vampires, and the undead who roam free in the early 20th century during World War I and later in the third game, The Roaring Twenties. The first game stars Yuri, a harmonixer able to transform into various demons, who's plagued by voices telling him to protect a strange girl, Alice. His adventure takes him throughout China, Japan, and later Europe, as he finds five other party members each with their own unique personal skills to help him protect Alice, find Kodelka, uncover the mysteries of the land, interfere with war and politics, and ultimately destroy the evil sorcerer Roger Bacon. But that's really enough about the plot, because I don't want to spoil anything here. So let's instead talk about some more unique aspects of the game, such as the Judgment Ring. Just about everything that you do in the game requires a spin of the Judgment Ring, from discounts to shopping, to the lottery system, to even kicking down doors or pulling levers. The ring is incorporated seamlessly into the world of Shadow Hearts, but it's especially used in battles. On the surface, battles look just like any other turn-based RPG. Only here, they're all lightning fast, challenging, and based around the ring. Hitting the correct zones on the ring will be the difference between missing or getting a critical hit. However, don't be scared. There are plenty of accessories out there to modify your ring to your pleasing, and to make it more or less challenging if you desire. But keep in mind, I'm old and I have the hand-eye coordination of a fruit fly, and I'm able to hit the ring. So if I can, anybody can. Another unique quirk of the battle system is the sanity point system. Each character has a set amount of sanity points, and every time a character takes their turn, they lose one of those points. And if they completely run out of those sanity points, they'll go insane which essentially acts as the confusion status, except that they gain no experience from the battle. And if everybody becomes insane, then it's a game over. So it does add another layer of strategy to the already strategic battles. For the vast majority of the random battles, you can pretty much ignore the sanity point system because you'll be able to kill the enemies quickly enough, so it really only becomes a burden during the longer boss fights. However, the developers were cognizant of this fact and they've designed the battles to be completed quickly enough, so nothing really drags on, and I really do appreciate that during the roughly 20-hour journey. While the first game does has many humorous moments mixed into the horror theme, the series only gets funnier as all the games progress. So much so that by the third game, the horror is all but dropped, and replaced by goofy humor instead. That being said though, the mixture of the two themes works very well, this was the very first horror RPG that I ever played. They all featured dark, foreboding environments, grisly animations, blood, demons, cannibals, and gore. So it's nice that there is some light-hearted humor sprinkled throughout, because I'm not really one to enjoy scary movies or TV shows about murder or anything like that. Downton Abbey and Bridgerton are much more my speed, so the humor really did help me get through this. Many of the characters that you're going to encounter are just off-the-wall wacky, like those two booty-shaking queens that follow you around in the second and third games. However, your own party members are no exception. Yuri himself is an absolute hoot. He is not your typical bright-eyed and bushy-tailed JRPG protagonist. He's older, wiser, and a bit of a womanizer, and he's cynical down to his core. The second game of the series, Shadow Hearts Covenant, takes place immediately following the events of the first game, with Yuri still as the protagonist, and it greatly expands on the world. You can now have four party members along in battle, and each character is much more clearly defined. Taking a page out of Final Fantasy VI book, each character comes with their own personal skill, and interestingly, those personal skills are only raised through character-specific side quests such as Blancas, who can fight other wolves to learn abilities, or Geppetto, who gains skills by dressing up as dolls, or Anastasia, who learns her blue magic through photography. Also, similarly to Final Fantasy VI, every party member can learn magic through the use of Magisite, or Crests. Basically, it's an astrology-based grid system. Once you equip the Crest, you have access to all the magic set in that Crest, 
but if you unequipped it or you swap it out for a different crest, you lose the magic. So you can't ever fully learn it, so I guess it's really more like materia in that sense. Throughout the course of your long journey, roughly 60 hours in the second game, you're going to be going to real-world countries and cities like St. Petersburg, London, Paris, Wales, Florence, and Japan. And you'll also be running into real-world people, such as the aforementioned sorcerer Roger Bacon, the late Russian Princess Anastasia, and the villainous Rasputin. The game is actually pretty progressive for its time as well. I believe it was just about the very first game that I ever played that featured not only gay characters who weren't villains, but also a gay party member. As a gay man myself, I do feel like it's very important to have representation in my favorite form of media because, truth be told, the only other time I ever saw gay characters in games was when they were written down as antagonists. While the first two games are directly related, both star Yuri and both take place in the old world during World War I, the third game now moves forward in years to the height of the Roaring Twenties and across the ocean to the Americas. The horror elements that were so prevalent in the first two games are pretty much dropped, and instead the humor has been increased about tenfold. Shadow Hearts from the New World stars Johnny, a pea-brained 16-year-old detective who is quickly joined by Shania, a Native American harmonics are able to fuse into the demon forms. Individual skills as well as crest magic has remained the same from the second game, but the difficulty level has increased substantially as the series crossed the pond. Puzzle elements, which were always present in the previous games, have been amped up a notch here as well. There really aren't any dungeons that are just straight paths. Just about everything involves a logic puzzle of some sort. And while sometimes I can find this to be tiring, I didn't mind it too much here because it kind of reminded me of Lufia too. Some other additions have been included in the battle system to make it a tad more fast-paced and strategic, such as the stock gauge and the combo system. The stock gauge is essentially a limit break type system where the meter fills up as you deal or take damage from the enemy, and then you can choose to use up a gauge to do two actions at one time or even execute a combo attack on the enemy with your other party members. Do be careful though, because your enemies have stock and combo capabilities as well, which really do contribute to the added difficulty of this entry. As a whole, I feel like the Shadow Hearts trilogy showcases the best that the PlayStation 2 has to offer. They are extraordinary offerings from one of the best RPG consoles ever to grace us during the waning years of the golden age of JRPGs. I just wish that the series would continue on into the modern age. Well, that's it for my overview and review of the Shadow Hearts series. If you like this video and what I do here on the channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. The link to it can be found in the video description. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.